morning. Good morning, dear friends of Nipak. We're going to offer you another episode of asking a few important business related questions from a professional. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mahior Basanyan, who is a very successful attorney focusing on construction and business litigation, including partnership, contractual, and corporate disputes, as well as construction defects, contractor disputes, public contract claims, mechanics liens, stop notices, and architectural contracts. You can see that she'll full versed in all aspects of construction law. We will be covering some deep questions about construction. However, more important than that, it is my honor and I'm very proud to say that Mayor is also a fellow physicist. She has a master's degree in physics with concentration in quantum electrodynamics. Now, you might want to have a one-on-one -on -one with her to understand how she ended up as an attorney starting with a physics degree. We'll leave that up to you. Mayor, it's a pleasure to have you here. So I am Mahdad Manavi. I am one of the board members of NEPOC. And on behalf of NEPOC Board of Directors, I thank you for supporting NEPOC, for being a business member and trying to educate our, um, our members with your knowledge. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you, uh, your invitation to be here. And it's a privilege to talk to fellow Iranian professionals. Oh, thank you. All right, so let's start uh, with some of the questions. Um, one of them is, <clears throat> excuse me, one of them is, is there a difference between construction law and real estate law? To many people, they're one and the same. Can you shed some light on it? Absolutely. Uh, let me start with real estate law. Real estate law is dealing with all aspects of the rights to real estate. Examples, um, when we're talking about easements, when we're talking about zoning, if there's a boundary dispute, if there is uh, eminent domain issues, there's a taking of property, purchase and sale of property. Those deal with rights to real estate. On the other hand, construction law deals with good old fashioned building. And what we mean by that is building a big tall structure, building your home, building streets and dams and flood control channels and stadiums, all the same. That's what comes under the entire dome of construction. Thank you for that explanation. And we know that we live in California and California is a so happy state. So, and construction, so in construction, so many things can go wrong. What are some of the ways that you recommend so construction companies can stay out of trouble? So a construction company at its heart is a business. And so the first thing that any business needs to do to make sure they stay out of trouble is to make sure that they are structured properly. As everybody knows, there are various entity formations in California, entities such as corporations, LLCs, sole proprietorships, partnerships, etc. And you want to make sure that whatever entity has been recommended uh, to you, it's done properly structured right. And the recommendation should come both from an attorney, from the legal side of it, and a tax advisor for tax purposes. So different entities provide different types of protections, and some of them are better for taxes in situation A as opposed to situation B. So that's number one, to make sure a company has been set up right. So, so that brings a question, <clears throat> and that is, Based on your experience, what is the predominant entity that construction companies are held? LLC, S Corp, C Corp, and, and why, based on your knowledge and experience again? 
most construction companies um, tend to be corporations just because of the fact that until a few years ago, uh, contracting companies, someone who was going to operate under a contractor's license in the state of California could not form LLCs. Now they can. Um, corporations and LLCs offers very similar protections to the owners, as we call them, uh, majority shareholders in a corporation or managing members or majority interest holders in an LLC. Very similar liability protection, meaning protection from lawsuits and protecting personal assets of the person who holds the majority of the interest. Um, all corporations are born as C corporations. So when we uh, file with the Secretary of State to get a corporation, it's always a C corporation. Now, after that, based on the assets of, of um, the person who's investing or persons who are investing in the corporation, what type of um, issues are they going to look at Tax-wise, they decide to go with an S election, which makes them an S corporation, where um, all of the income of the corporation flows through to the shareholders and gets reported on a Schedule K, or they decide to stay a C corporation, which is usually recommended for very large corporations, but they're gonna hold a lot of money at the corporate level and they wanna have the tax advantage of getting, um, getting to pay less for corporate taxes. And then the individuals each get taxes on whatever salaries they draw. Right, and, and, and thank you for that explanation. So, so in my profession as a certified business broker, where I work with business owners when they're ready to sell their business, there are two professionals that are my best buddies and I always work with them. One are attorneys, absolutely, exactly what you said. We want to make sure that the business owner is protected. The other one is a CPA or an accountant to help us with the tax trend, taxation and, and saving on the tax border of the, of the deal. And, and thank you for that explanation. You're one of the very few people who like attorneys, huh? <laughs> you know, I, I, I learned this and I live by this motto that, you know, somebody said that and I loved it. It says, if you think I'm expensive, wait until you work with a rookie. So always, always, always ask for professionals. It may cost you a little bit upfront, but it will definitely save you a whole lot more in the long run because you know you're getting the right advice from your attorney, your CPA, or whoever professional you work with. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> now, obviously, we just talked about it. You know, one of the ways to minimize cost of any lawsuit is by preventing it. And you definitely want to hire the right professional, especially attorneys, somebody in your case to make sure that everything is done properly upfront. There are no open holes that need to be plugged, creating vulnerability for the business. So in addition to that, hiring somebody like yourself, Mahia, what else do you recommend that business owners, especially in, in construction to do to minimize the cost of any lawsuit or litigation? So um, in addition to creating the entity properly, they have to um, keep up with the formalities that are set under the corporation's code in the state of California. And that means they should hold meetings or have meeting minutes every year and um, file uh, the right filings with the state, as well as make sure that the business and personal funds are not commingled. That's, that's one of the number one reasons that someone can come after your personal assets, even if you have a corporation. Um, on the second level is something that we don't do, but we always recommend, make sure you have the right insurance for your type of company. For uh, construction businesses, they need commercial general liability policy or CGL, we call it. They have to have the right workers' compensation is the law. 
you can actually operate without a commercial general liability policy, uh, which nobody recommends, but without a workers' compensation policy, you are on the illegal side of things. Um, so, so you make sure all those insurance, uh, various types of insurance, auto and this and that are in place. And then you wanna look at what do you do in your everyday dealings, okay? So you might <clears throat> use a lot of vendors. You might, uh, as a construction company, you might subcontract your work. Um, you might um, buy materials from material suppliers. You have to make sure you have the right contract for each and every one of these. So for a construction company that does general contracting, we, we recommend that they have their own uh, contract with an owner. Also their own subcontract for the various subcontractors. And then, you know, maybe use those with large suppliers of materials as well. And Maya, your office also helps them in developing and writing those contractual agreements, correct? Yes, so um, we started, I started doing 100% litigation a few years down the road, and I've been doing this for 21 years. People started asking, hey, clients, we've been with you through litigation for two years, we've suffered, we don't want to ever do this again. What do we do to prevent? And so we started doing a lot of preventative measures. Right now, we do about 80% litigation, 20% uh, preventative measures, drafting contracts. We even provide advice through the course of construction so they stay away from trouble. There's all these little steps they can take. And as you said, it's pennies on the dollar uh, to do the preventative work because litigation is very expensive and also very stressful for people. Absolutely. Although your majority of your work is on construction and that's kind of your concentration, your domain expert, you also help general business with general business litigation and business entity formation. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So um, again, it came out of necessity. Uh, construction companies are all businesses. And um, we've done a lot of business litigation. Um, it comes out of a construction practice where there's a partnership dispute, where there are uh, various type of shareholder disputes, where there's a dispute about what they're doing and what kind of um, trade secrets there are and that type of stuff. So um, we do a lot of business uh, disputes um, in that uh, there's a, there's some of the employment issues that come along, but a lot of trade secrets and um, uh, business and professions code for the lack of making it sound, sound normal, not lawyer speak. It's the stuff where there's fraud and there's different kinds of business practices that shouldn't be done. So all of those come under business litigation. A lot of times these kind of construction and business kind of come hand in hand and they, they intersect somewhere. And um, so, you know, uh, we, do, we do both the business law and the construction law. Awesome. I really wanted to thank you for this short video and making yourself available for a little bit of education on how business owners can protect themselves and what kind of questions they need to ask from their attorneys, even more importantly. I, I personally look forward to our longer um, interview during Mix at Six coming up in June. So we invite all the members to join us. In the meantime, if you wish to contact Mahia, this is her, um, I'm going to share that. Uh, what you see is her contact info. Maybe there is a pending issue, an urgent issue that you really need to take care of right now. I cannot wait until uh, until the Mix at Six meeting coming up in June. So and please, Rafa, uh, can I can I add a, a simpler website for you there? Sure. OCConstructionAttorneys.com. There we go. 
occonstructionattorneys.com. There we go. Very simple. So with that, I thank you very much. Again, have a wonderful time. And I look forward to our uh, discussion during Mix 6 6 Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to that discussion as well. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye-bye.